telescopes. So we know we, why we need telescopes. We know what we want to do. We want to see the universe, see space, right? We can't go there aside from our hood. So we need to gather this light, break it down, see what it has to tell us. We'll talk about what it has to tell us later. Right now, let's talk about basic telescope design. They're not that complicated, and of course, they can be very complicated if you want to be an optical engineer. Three things that we want from our telescopes, three main things, right? We want first and foremost and most important is that we want the image that we see to be clearer. We want it to be less fuzzy, right? You can imagine taking a picture of someone's face and it's all fuzzy. That's not good. You want it clearer. See the details, right? If their eyes look like one eye, that's not good. You want to separate the eyes. More resolution is the term. You look for more resolution. It's a sharper image, right? So if I've got, for example, uh, some picture and it looks kind of like this, sort of looks like one dot. If somehow, optically, I can make that less fuzzy, get rid of some of that fuzz, I can start to realize that, hey, there's, there's kind of two dots in there. Kind of reduce that fuzz a little bit. I can see two little things. In fact, at a car at a great distance, the two headlights will look like one. As it gets closer, it'll look like it's separating. If I can make this clearer, well, maybe I can completely separate the dots. If I can make them clearer, then I can really separate those dots, right? And a nice super resolution would be like that, okay? So that's what we want, clearer pictures. For example, walk out and look at the Milky Way. It's got a, you need a dark sky, you might live near a city, so you gotta go somewhere. Look at that strip, it's kind of a milky strip, spilled milk. But look at it with simple binoculars and you will see that rather than being fuzzy, it's a whole bunch of individual stars like a diamond mine. Absolutely beautiful, so try to do that. Anyway, we'd like things to be sharper, sharper images, clearer, less fuzzy resolution. Second thing we want here is brighter. Why do we want them brighter? Well, if you can see dimmer things, right, you can't see Neptune with your eye, but with a telescope, you can see it. And then if you can see something even dimmer, maybe a galaxy, it's so far away, it's so incredibly dim, but we'd like it brighter. And the dimmer you can see, the more distant you can see. Right, so how do we do that? We need to collect and gather more light from that object and put it together. So if you overlap light and light and light and light, it becomes brighter. Okay, so we, that's another goal we'd like to, we'd like to see farther away. And the third goal is to increase the maximum magnification. If you take a photograph and you blow it up, at some point that photograph starts looking fuzzy. If it's a better camera, then you can blow it up even to a, a greater amount and it'll still stay clear. So a better telescope, you can blow that up more and more and it'll still stay clear. That's all I'm saying here. So that's nice. This is the least important to an astronomer. We're not really talking about photos on the wall when we're doing actual astronomy. We want to find the information. So this is the least important. And yet this is the thing that they'll try to sell you on if you go to a uh, kind of a non-telescope store and they'll say, look at the magnification. Yeah, but I, I want resolution, I want brighter. How do I get that? Two key things. One, first and foremost, the main solution to all of this, all in one solution is make it bigger, and I'll tell you what I mean. Bigger is gonna give you all this. The bigger opening, you need a bigger opening. Of course, you need quality of construction, so you know. Uh, you use some name brands and things like that, and usually you get what you pay for, right? So bigger is going to give you all of these things that you desire. Sharper images, more resolution, and you're gonna be able to see more distant things. Okay, let's check that out. Let's see the two basic uh, telescope designs. Here, optical telescope, the thing that you would put to your eye, you can obviously see the visible light. We got two designs, one's refractor, one's a reflector. One uses lenses where the light goes through, bends. You've got a lens like glasses, contact lenses. And the other main has a main part of a mirror where the light comes in and reflects. So it's a reflector 
unfortunately, refractor sounds a lot like reflector, but just reflect, mirror, refract lenses. Okay, just so you know about this a little bit. You're looking at some object, a planet, a, uh, a cluster of stars, a galaxy, and here's your telescope. So here's your telescope. All right, you're going to look through it. Great. Um, there's two main parts. One is there's a lens right here. That's the objective lens. Why? Because the object is near it. It's the objective lens. All right, cool. So we've got the objective lens. And this is the main piece. When I say you want to make it bigger, what we want bigger is that part right there. And if that's bigger, more light's going to get into it. You'll gather more light, and then you'll funnel it down until it goes to your eye. So you're taking all that light from that one object and going in. So you're going to be able to see more distant objects. They're going to be clearer. So it will increase the resolution and so on. OK, good. But you need to look at it with your eye. So there's another main piece, which is the eye piece. And this is an important part. Of, clearly, that's the part that you put your eye to. So um, that's an eye. Uh, you can change the eyepiece. So we have a variety of eyepieces. And you can adjust it. So you can focus things, and you can magnify things. So I can, for example, kind of adjust that piece this way. And I just look through it. There's my objective lens, my eyepiece. Now, variations of this certainly exist. I mean, a really good refractor is going to have lenses in here that are going to do some corrections in there, It'll tend to be heavier that way. Uh, you can put the eyepiece up here by putting a little mirror in here, so you can put the eyepiece up there. Uh, so a variety of designs, but here's your refractor, objective lens, eyepiece, and anything in between, which will increase the cost of significance. Some people like this, it's, it's kind of me. All right, good. Um, next, the reflector. Well, the main part's the mirror. Where's the mirror? Well, it's got to be on the back, not the front. Objective lens is in the front. The main part is the mirror. So let's, let's talk about this. Uh, refractor, what's the light do? It comes in from your object. It bends. Actually, kind of crosses here. You don't have to worry about that too much. It goes there. Eyepiece sends it out. So it goes through a lens. Light goes through a lens. Over here, what's happening is the light comes in and bounces off the mirror. Right? And it heads up this way. So this is the primary mirror. It's the first thing you hit. It's kind of like the objective lens. It's like it in that this is what you want to make bigger in order to get a better telescope. And bigger is going to gather more light, which will focus into your eye, funnel into your eye. It'll make distant things brighter so you can see them. It'll make for a sharper image, clearer, more resolution. So that's the guy. And then it goes up. Now, you can't stick your head here because then you block the light. So that's not going to be good. So you're going to have to pay a little bit of a price here. You've got to have the secondary mirror, which deflects the light to the light piece. Light comes in here, here, and where does it go? You send it out here. And then that's a good old light piece just like before, which you can change or adjust focusing things or magnifying things. At some point, you magnify, magnify, and it gets fuzzier and fuzzier, obviously. Um, how do you improve that? Well, make this bigger. And that's the basic telescope design, OK? So let's just take a look. We've got objective lens, eyepiece, maybe lenses in between. A couple of basic lenses. Let's call it Galilean scope. In fact, good old Galileo scope, scope here. Um, basic design that he used. It's the same for binoculars as well. I mean, binoculars have objective lenses and an eyepiece, which you can adjust and focus, right? In fact, this would be your first telescope, not a telescope. Binoculars, more than likely. Get something that mounts on a tripod, then you can take it to a sports game or some performance, music performance, whatever it is. So it's good. Binoculars are given by two numbers. The front number and the back number, this says 7 by 50 millimeters. 7 is the magnification. Now you might think, oh, get more magnification, get a 10. Well, if it magnifies more, then things spread out more. 
And what happens is you're looking at a narrower patch of the sky or the stage or the football field or whatever you look in baseball field. So seven is how much it magnifies. And then there's an X, it's not a multiplication, it's just seven magnification and 50 millimeters is the opening. It's the same as 50 centimeters. Oh, excuse me, it's the same as five centimeters, five centimeters, okay. It's about five peaky tips across. And what do you want bigger? Well, the objective lens, so this. So you can get those things like that, which are pretty crazy, a little bit hard to you know, go like that to a, a concert. Uh, so it's a balance. Seven by 50, I think a really nice, you pay a price for uh, being able to resist the weather, things like that, uh, eight by 50. So that's a, that's a nice option. But aside from that, to, uh, refractors tend to be ex expensive and they have some problems. So we generally go with reflectors here. And with a reflector design, here's the, the basic thing here is you just, you just got a tube, you got a paper towel tube or something, some cardboard tube, light comes down, hits a, the primary mirror. Right? It's curved, bounces back and hits a secondary mirror. Then you send it through this eyepiece here, right? And that's it, that's the basic design. Um, I can do another one here. What it, it's a telescope, oh, what's it? It's got a mirror on the back, that's a primary. Gotta have a secondary mirror in there, send it through here. I can adjust this and I can change it. I can magnify more if I use an eyepiece with a smaller number. This sees a bigger patch of the sky called a finder scope. So I get it in the center here and then this guy magnifies everything so you actually see the smaller part of the sky. Bigger is better? Yeah, well, uh, you know, if you want to put a 10 inch mirror on that guy, you can have a long tube, aren't you? A hollow tube. I haven't made a telescope out of it. I need a mirror on the back, a secondary mirror, stick an eyepiece in there, and I'm good to go. It starts getting long though. So, another part is called another type of design rather than this Newtonian reflector, is a Cassegrain, or you'll hear a Schmidt Cassegrain, which has a lens on the front to correct things. But that cuts it in half by intercepting the light down here. And to do that, you've got to curve that mirror. It intercepts it, and it sends it back here and then you can have your eyepiece here. It's the same basic design, you see, but the tube gets shortened. And so that's a Cassegrain, Cass, or often a Schmidt Cassegrain, and you're gonna pay for it. Uh, but it's nice, more convenient if you wanna get bigger. So finally, I wanna say, how do I choose? Well, one is expense. Uh, lenses tend to be expensive. Mirrors, less expensive, more reasonable. The other is something called spherical aberration. I'm not going to get to, into this too much, but if you have a spherical curve, it tends to be fuzzy near the edges, it bends it too much. You, know, you can look at that. Uh, both of these have, yes, that's a problem. Yes, that's a problem. Uh, so the answer is make an, uh, a parabolic shape. I'm just going to mention this, so it, but it costs a little money. Right? So you can do that. Aberration means a problem. Personality aberration is a problem. Uh, spherical aberration is it's kind of not fuzzy because of that shape. So you make a better shape. Both of those have that issue and you just got to pay for it. Uh, chromatic aberration. That means colors separate. Like going through a prism, they separate. And so that means blue will focus at a different place than red. And if you got the blue in focus, the red's not in focus, and it's a little problem. So what do you do? You use, that's a problem. Use corrector lenses. That's more money. Not a problem with mirrors. So that's good, mirrors are ahead. Uh, Glass sags, it bends. In fact, you want to get bigger and bigger when you get lenses. And the biggest lens near the end of the 1800s was about this big, but it sags, it bends. And that little bit of bending curvature makes it fuzzy. 
So that is an issue. And so when you want a research telescope, not so good. This is not an issue. Not a problem. Why? Because you can support that mirror from behind because the light's not going through it. Fine. What about bubbles? Not really a problem. Just a little issues for the coating. But with a, a lens, you gotta, if it's a big lens and you have no bubble, if you got bubbles in there, the light's gonna go all over the place. So that's a problem. How do you fix it? With money. <laughs> and also, glass, like our atmosphere, will block some light, some frequencies of light, the opacity. That's a problem. This guy's not, who, <laughs> what's gonna win? Well, for optical, uh, your own telescope, there's reasons some people really get into it and spend the money over here. You know, we won't go into that. But for, for most of us, and for research, the winner is mirrors. And so we'll talk a little bit about that in class and more. And uh, Now you got a little introduction to the basics of telescopes. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, play with them and uh, enjoy. See deep. <laughs>